Hello, everybody. And welcome to the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary 2021 information session. We're delighted you're all joining us here today to find the where and the what's and the why's and the who's abouts about the bursary from myself, Jenny. I'm the head of learning and culture in Mali. Um, you'll hear from Simon O'Connor, who's the director of Mali, and 2020's writer of note, Alan McMonagall. We are also joined by the wonderful Amy Cahill, who is a young person who was part of the bursary last year. Um, I am going to flick to the next slide, which will give you information on the plan for the session. So here is our wicked and wonderful plan. Uh, we are going to run for 45 minutes. Um, I am here, Jenny, uh, to welcome you all here. And hopefully this session is informative and you get key information that if you are a young person really suits you and you feel well and capable and excited about applying for the bursary, or if you're a parent or a youth worker or a support worker that, or teacher in fact, that you can find ways that you can support young people in applying for the process um, and also give them a gentle nudge to apply. Um, joining me here today uh, are my fellow colleagues from Molly. We have Laura, who's part of the digital team, and we also have Katie, who it works with me and Molly too. Um, we have a session that will run really till around 25 to 6 and 10 minutes at the end, we will have a QA. and um, Just to let you know that this is being recorded and I'm going to pass you over to Laura, who will tell you her role in this webinar. Yeah, so I'm part of the digital team here in Molly, and uh, I'll be taking your questions. So if you have any questions, just pop them in the Q&A there or in the chat and uh, I can pass them on to uh, somebody on the team who can ask them then. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Laura. And I'm now going to pass you over to Katie and her role in this webinar. Uh, hello, everyone. You're very welcome. My name is Katie. I am a curatorial assistant at Molly, and I will be assisting Laura with your questions. So I'll be managing the chat. So if you have any questions or any concerns, feel free just to pop something in there and we will get you some answers. Brilliant. Thanks, Katie. So this is our run for the session today. Um, we will be joined by Simon, who'll talk about why the Edna O'Brien bursary. Um, I will then jump back in and chat about who can apply, what to expect, the timeline. And then we'll be joined by Alan and Amy. Um, we were joined by Daniel, uh, one of the young people who took part in last year. But unfortunately, he's not available today. But we are joined by Amy and Alan. And they will offer us key insights on applying some top tips and their experience of taking part last year and then we'll have a Q&A at the end and we'll be finished at 5.45 p.m. How does that sound? Good. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Simon O'Connor, the director of Molly, who will give you more information on the Edna O'Brien bursary. Hi, Simon. Hi, Jenny. Thanks a million for that. Um, and uh, welcome to everybody uh, to this info session and um, we're really really excited uh, to be going into the second year of the Edna O'Brien bursary and um, it's uh, it's one of the one of our favorite things um, that we do here at the at the museum so I'm really excited uh, that you've attended to get a bit of information on it and um, just to give you a little bit of background about Molly itself so the Museum of Literature Ireland is a, a creative collaboration between UCD and the National Library of Ireland. And we're located, you can see a little photograph there from our lovely back garden. Uh, we're located in the original home of UCD, um, UCD Newman House within the, the, the UCD Knox and Joyce Centre on St. Stephen's Green, right in the heart of Dublin. And um, the museum opened in September, 2019. And um, it was a project that had been in development for uh, nearly eight years at that point. Um, and we had a lovely six months before we were uh, caught on the hop by COVID. Um, and we've been uh, we've been closed since then with just a few weeks of opening during these lockdowns. Um, but thankfully, a lot of our programs have managed to continue um, digitally as well. And uh, and our first Edna O'Brien bursary was last year, and it happened online. 
and we were delighted that it went so well online. It was something that we were um, tentative about, but uh, it, it, it went really well. And you'll hear more about that later on. Um, I suppose just the reason why the reason why we're doing the bursary, I think um, why we created it, I think it's probably important to give you a little bit of background on that. Um, really, there's, there are a huge amount of support for um, for adult writers across the kind of literary spectrum at different career stages, and um, both within Ireland and abroad, um, and we felt that one of the, I suppose, one of the gaps or the needs that Molly could 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 meet would be around teenage writers. And something we were conscious of was that um, in Ireland we have this great big um, uh, monolithic thing called the Leaving Cert uh, that comes along. Uh, when you're about 16 or 17 and um, and frightens the bejapers out of you and sucks away all of your energy uh, and then out the other end you may end up going to college and you know possibly looking back at all of that creative work and writing that you were doing as a young teenager and wonder whatever happened to that and something that we wanted this bursary to do was I suppose to catch young writers or young people with a, who have a real genuine interest and passion for writing um, at this point, just before um, that whole exam system kind of takes over their, 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 their lives in a way and, um, and really gives us an opportunity to show those young people that, look, you know, beyond all of that, when you go to university or into adulthood, um, that, uh, that, you know, it's possible to be a professional writer. It's possible to study writing in university and to introduce them to, I suppose, a network of people um, on the one hand that could uh, illuminate all of that for, uh, for them. So we had, you know, we have guest speakers throughout the bursary, both from within the publishing industry, other well-known writers um, uh, publishers, people like that, uh, academics. And um, so they really get exposed to, I suppose, the landscape uh, of writing um, within the adult world. Um, and then also over the course of that week, uh, to really give those students a chance to look at their own um, creative writing practice, kind of nascent or, or, or in its infancy as it might be, um, and to look at that with, with a major Irish writer uh, as well, who would give them that kind of mentoring focus over the course of the week um, to really kind of uh, hopefully amplify what they're doing already. And the other really important part of it as well, um, uh, and even more important than maybe we realised ourselves when creating this bursary, um, is that it will also introduce the the um, uh, the bursarinos, as we call them, uh, to a community of of like-minded peers as well. So um, uh, there are 15 students uh, that that win a place on the bursary. Um, and we really, really go to, 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 to huge lengths to try and connect them with each other and to allow them um, the facility to build a community amongst themselves um, so that they can support each other in, in, in their writing ambitions. Um, so that's what we, that's what we hope uh, it achieves. That's, what we, that's why we created it. Um, and, uh, and we really, really hope, uh, we really, really hope you apply or that you encourage young people that you know um, to apply. It is, um, it is an extremely special week. Um, it's rare that you create a program uh, in this way where, um, you know, this is a, it's a donor funded bursary. So a single donor um, provided the funding for this bursary in perpetuity. And, uh, and it is rare that you get to take those, that type of financial input and target it specifically uh, at a program like this. So um, we, we, we're very proud of it um, and we really, really hope you apply and encourage others to apply as well. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Simon. It's great hearing the background of the Edna O'Brien Bursary. Um, we are going to move on and talk about, well, really, what is the goal of the bursary? And as Simon mentioned there, the goal of the bursary is to attract writers between the age of 15 and 17 years um, with significant potential and then afford them the possibility to explore that potential. What's really important uh, to say is we are not looking for polished or finished pieces of writing or even writers with large amounts of experience. Where if you are a writer, we're interested in hearing about you, your passion and your creativity. Um, and if you're a parent or a teacher or a youth worker, we're interested in hearing about ways you can support them to get those words onto the page too. So um, that's really the goal of the bursary. And um, you'll notice in some of our pictures here of 
part of Molly too. Um, that's one of our beautiful uh, floor three section um, that we have here. Uh, so who can apply? So all young people between the age of 15 and 17 years across the island of Ireland are welcome to apply. And we actively encourage applications from a diversity of ethnic and or cultural groups, including but not limited to Asian, Black, Traveller and minority ethnic, refugees, people with disabilities, working class and LGBTQI+. Um, entry is very simple. It has an easy application online and it does not cost a thing. So what can you expect if you are selected? So you will be welcome to a week long immersive writing program, which will run online and fingers and toes crossed on site up in our museum in Mali in July 2021. Obviously, we will be guided by the public health guidelines around that, but the week will be from Monday the 19th of July until Friday the 23rd of July. So as Simon was saying, 15 selected students will develop their creative practice under the guidance of a leading writer, which will soon be revealed, as well as meet with representatives from the publishing industry, UCD academic staff and other writers. And um, just so you know, last year, the guest speakers included the writer Colin McCann, uh, the spoken word artist Natalia O'Flaherty, and um, the writer and academic Paul Perry, as well as publishers, including Lisa Cohen from Tramp Press. Um, all students will also have their work published as a special edition under the Molly Editions imprint. Now you can see in the picture here on the right and actually in my hands is the imprint from writers like the wonderful Amy that will be talking in a little while. Um, and this is available on sale in the Molly shop too. Um, last year's anthology was called Keep the Light On um, and it is pretty fantastic. Um, as well as being given membership to the museum, the students will be invited to various museum events and workshops throughout the year. And um, as requested by the group last year, uh, also will receive seriously amazing hoodies <laughs> um, and creativity packs throughout the year, packs including books, um, notebooks, inspiration from other writers too that will further kind of develop their creative practice. Um, all bursary staff and programming and events and practices are delivered in line with Molly's child protection policy and safeguarding statement too. So here's how you apply. Uh, you apply online via an application form. And it's really that simple. So if you go to molly.ie um, and in the learning section, you will find the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary and all the information that you need is in that section, including the online application form. And the online application form is really quite simple. It's split up into three sections. The first section is consent because all of the young people who engage in the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary are essentially children, they're 15 to 17 year olds, we need to get consent by a parent or guardian. And then section two, uh, the applicant themselves, they fill out that section. And actually section three is the application. Uh, and this is the really exciting bit. It's not extensive. So each section is no more than 300 words. So the first section is about you where we are really asking young people who apply for the bursary to tell us why they should be selected for the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary. Why you? What makes you distinctly unique and individual? And why should you be selected? Um, the next section is your writing. So you're going to submit an extract of something that you have written, again, around 300 words. So it can be a short creative prose, poetry, piece of fiction, nonfiction, um, and then you, you, you press submit and you're done. Um, and that is literally how simple the process is. 
Uh, so I would encourage you that even if you're skeptical now to go on site and have a look at the application form and you will see that the process is really quite simple. So here are the key timelines that we have for the bursary. Applications close on Monday the 29th of March 2021 at 10 p.m. We always decide to do it on a Monday late because it just means people have the whole weekend um, and they also have that little bit of Monday to get it in and get it through to us. Everyone if you're successful or not successful, will be notified of the outcome on Friday, the 21st of May, 2021. And then, like I've mentioned before, the bursary week is Monday, the 19th of July to the 23rd of July, 2021. So now, there's been a lot of me talking and I'm delighted to introduce some people who were integral to the Edna O'Brien inaugural bursary week in 2020. So first of all, we have Amy here who's joining us, who was a young person, one of the 15 young people who were selected to take part in the bursary. Um, I actually am going to introduce Amy based on her really fantastic bio um, that's included in this uh, anthology. And it says, Amy Cahill is an 80 year old, 80, not 80, just to be clear, 18 year old <laughs> writer from Gory. She shares her name with a fictional book character, but has unfortunately not yet embarked on her own danger filled adventure to save the planet. You're more than welcome, Amy. And I'm also going to introduce you to our mentor of note for 2020, the wonderful Alan McMonagle. So here's a little information on Alan um, that I would like to share with you. So Alan is a writer from Galway. He holds an MA in writing from NUI Galway and also teaches there. Alan signed a two book deal with Picador in 2015. His first novel Ithaca was published in 2017 and was nominated for Lots of awards, including the Desmond Elliott Prize, the International Dublin Literary Award and an Irish Book Award. In March 2020, his second novel, Laura Cassidy's Walk of Fame, was released. Um, and we are delighted to have Alan here to join us today. And I suppose my question for Alan is, you were really the mentor last year for the 2020 bursary. And how was that for you? What was that experience like being a mentor of 15 selected talented young people last year? I mean, it was, it was an amazing experience, really. I mean, um, it was daunting, of course, challenging, um, but hardly um, so, so rewarding, uh, indeed, in ways I couldn't have anticipated, you know. Um, I remember an early question of the, the 15 talented young writers, what was their abiding expectation for the week? And the, uh, the, the common answer was that they, you know, they were all here to learn. And by the end of the week, um, they had done more than that. I mean, they had learned, shared, um, collaborated together and far and above beyond uh, their tender years. Uh, to an extent that I felt I was the one, if you like, uh, that had learned. But, um, but really my, my role as a mentor, I mean, it, really the beginning of that, it goes all, for me, it goes all the way back to um, January of last year. It seems like a, another world, another planet, light years away um, where we are today. But when I, you know, when I received uh, a call from, uh, from Simon, Simon O'Connor, director of Molly, um, that's really when I was first ma made aware of, of the existence of the, uh, the Talented Young Writers Bursary and also that it was to be named in honour of, um, you know, the, the literature herself, Edna O'Brien. Um, I was also told that Edna herself had been asked to nominate the inaugural uh, writing mentor. And Simon then sort of casually um, told me that it was uh, my, myself that she had nominated. And I remember at the time, he kindly said, take your time if you want to have a think about it. 
but um, but really, I didn't have to think about it at all. You know, if um, if Edna O'Brien you know, singled you out for something, you uh, you don't need to think. You you uh, you bite her hand off. You pinch yourself and offer thanks for the honor and the, the privilege. So really, from from there on, it was um, was really the task was really assembling. A, a plan, if you like, what, what we might uh, put together for the inaugural uh, week-long um, bursary uh, for the duration of it. And, um, and having signed on, you know, I, I started to ask myself questions, questions like, um, you know, had I, what sort of ideas did I have? And what might a talented bunch of young writers themselves want? What might they expect? And, um, you know, what, what, what can I provide? And of course, over discussion with your, with your good self, Jenny, learning manager, and Simon, Simon O'Connor, and like the semblance of a plan began to emerge. And it seemed like a good one, you know, for the week that was in it, that we would take, you know, the talented young writers on a, on a journey, a writer's journey, a writing adventure, um, if you like, that would encompass pretty much everything that a walking, talking, gigging, professional writer themselves has to do. In short, it would be a journey that would take a writer all the way from inspiration to page, and that would culminate um, in every budding writer's dream, you know, with, um, with a culmination, with, with, uh, with a publication, um, which is uh, precisely um, what happened. And... Um, some of the, you know, we quickly settled in on some of the steps that would be necessary for such a journey. Um, we would invite the, the, the talented young writers to generate a piece of writing. We would give them a series of guidelines we would like them to um, adhere to as best they could. Uh, and throughout the week, we would workshop the pieces. We would share the pieces amongst each other, uh, amongst ourselves and amongst each other. The pieces would be edited, tweaked, polished, scrubbed until, you know, we felt that they were uh, lickety spit and ready to go to press. Um, and then the you know, publication was assembled. Beautiful, beautiful cover design. And um, and first of all, we had a we had a celebratory uh, launch day on, on the Friday to uh, to toast the uh, the blood and sweat and tears of the preceding <laughs> um, four and a half days. And, um, you know, it was, it was, you know, on reflection, it was just a fantastic week. And um, in service to that as well, I think Simon alluded to it already. It was, um, we thought it would be a good idea to, um, to bring in, to invite in an array of guest speakers, you know, um, bookish folk um, from, from, from a variety of um, bookish um, avenues, if you like. And they would come in and share their experiences. So, um, you know, the, um, so over the course of, of the week, there were the talented young writers, they got to hear from publicists, editors, publishers, young adult novelists, spoken word artists, and, and I think, yeah, and a, and a world-renowned novelist himself, uh, Colin McCann, um, uh, no else uh, rocked up on final day to share some uh, pearls of wisdom. Um, and it was, um, you know, it was a personal highlight for me just to, just to watch and witness and hear the, the, the young writers, you know, chip in with their own reflections and thoughts and comments. And, you know, there were lots of questions for the various guest speakers. And, and there were, it was great to see them buzzing amongst each other, you know, after, after each guest speaker had done his or her thing. Um, and to hear them, you know, rapid firing and favorite comments and, you know, nuggets, special nuggets that they had um, reached for and clung to themselves and, um, and were all set to come as their, their new writing credos. Indeed, one such gem um, ended up inspiring uh, the, title, the title of the publication, uh, Keep the Light On. And so for me, you know, the most important feature of the week was the writers themselves. And um, in my opinion, you know, this, this Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary provides you know, a fantastic, fantastic opportunity for young writers out there to immerse themselves, um, if you like, into the, um, into the urgencies and delights and the mysteries and practicalities and you know, the flip flop existence and ultimately you know, the wards that are up for grabs in, um, in a writing life. And um, yeah, 
um, I would I would urge you all to apply. And just, 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 you know, for the words collaboration, you know, there's no pecking order. We're all in this together. And um, I'm really in my capacity as mentor, it's just to be there to, at times uh, to steer, advise, encourage, you know, offer a suggestion here and there, tweak a line here and there. And, um, and just to watch the work emerge and to see the, see the talent just bloom and for flourish throughout the week i mean it's yeah it's, it's, it's so so rewarding um, it was I think magic. Um, thanks alan yeah, it really yeah was. it really was magic um and you contributed to every element of that magic so thanks a million for that uh, we will be uh, disclosing who the um writer of note is for 2021 very soon um so do uh -huh. Keep an eye out on our social media pages <laughs> for that information too. Um, and we look forward to sharing that with you. So thanks, Alan. And I'm going to hand over to one of our young people, Amy. Um, and I suppose we've invited Amy here today because essentially the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary is about young people. In Mali, we are committed to youth creativity. Um, and all of our programming and how we deliver our programs are very much based on the learning styles and um, the needs um, and the abilities of people who are selected for the bursary. And we had an exceptional bunch of which Amy is here to talk about the experience. So I suppose my first question for you, Amy, is number one, what made you apply for the bursary? I applied for the bursary because when I saw the bursary I thought that is a great opportunity to you know expand my horizons a bit and really get involved in writing because it is my favourite thing in the world. So yeah that's sort of what made me apply is just the desire to kind of even learn more about the practical parts of writing like publishing and stuff. I feel like there's a big door like a secret door and no young writers know you know how do I publish how do I do any of this or that and um yeah, I thought the bursary would be a great opportunity to just learn and, you know, perhaps grow a little brighter. And do you feel you learned much, Amy, about yourself and I about the writing magic door and what's behind it? <laughs> I do. I certainly feel like a more steady footing to go on into the world and become a writer, hopefully one day. Um, yeah, the bursary was everything I wanted it to be and so, so much more. And like, I did it online. So I'm sure in person it would be even spectacular. Yeah, it really was the most amazing, like indescribable experience ever. I loved it. And so have you any <laughs> top tips to share for anyone thinking about applying for the bursary this year? Amy's top tips. No pressure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, in my application, I thought, I, I don't know if mine was quite weird because looking to the others, I think mine was quite different to the others in the sense that for my about myself section, I told them about the first time I want, I decided I wanted to be a writer and um, it was in fourth class and I was in the shower and I thought of a story idea and from that day on, I was like, I'm going to be a writer, that's what I meant to do with my life. Um, but basically, top tips is just be yourself. That's what I was in that little sh section there. It was just me going on my little ambly story that I've talked to loads of people before. Um, yeah, so be yourself. And I don't like when people tell me what I should and shouldn't write. I think represent yourself as the writer you are because I don't write very cheerful things. I mean, I, I've had a few bits and bobs published and they're all quite, you know, serious topics, I suppose. Um, so don't hide that. I think be authentically yourself as a writer and that would be my main tip is to just be yourself and don't, Say what you think they want to hear just you know what you want to say <laughs> oh amy they are two of the best nuggets i couldn't have actually scripted it myself um yes <laughs> your your application was uniquely you so just be uniquely you and don't try and write for what you think the adjudicators or judges might want write what you love and what really you are passionate about. There are two brilliant tips. Thank you for those, Amy. And before we move on to the Q&A, because I know time is ticking, I suppose, Amy, I want to ask you, um, what were your highlights 
of the Edna O'Brien Bursary 2020. What stands out for you? I mean, aside from all the wonderful guests, it was genuinely the, fifth, the 14 other participants that made the week brilliant. I have made 14 amazing friends who were all in group chat together still. Uh, the last time I texted them was this morning. So we're all in very regular contact. And Daniel in particular, actually, enough, we're amazing friends now. We intend to meet up once all this lockdown stuff is over. Um, but I met people that are just similar to me in the sense that I feel like a lot of people in the world have square brains. And I feel like I met people with like circle brains like my own in the sense that we're all kind of creative and a bit bonkers, but it, they were the most amazing people. And that was the best bit for me is just meeting like-minded people that are great. <laughs> oh, that's a great sound. So if you want to hang out with like-minded people um, who fill you up and make you feel really excited about writing and support you at such a young age you can only go on and feel strengthened by that so thanks a million amy um they were magic tips um and your highlights were really insightful and fantastic and i'm sure and um, hopefully really helpful to people watching um the webinar as well um just to let you know in molly we do have a lot of resources online so if you're a teacher or if you're a young person um, at home, um, we have a series called Novel Teens, which is a free to access um, series of mini masterclasses, especially made for teenagers. So we have writers like Dave Rudden, Sarah Maria Griffin, who actually coined the phrase, keep the light on because she was one of the guests last year too. Um, and responded to a young person, I think it may have been Daniel, in a tweet and said, keep the light on. So that became the name of the anthology. Um, we have Derek Landy and um, we have Deirdre Sullivan. So we've loads of fantastic writers who give six to seven minute masterclasses on how to write. So I'd encourage you to go on to molly.ie and the learning section and you will find novel teens there. We also have decided to kind of broaden our reach. So we have started to do some podcasts um, too. So we have podcasts from Sarah Maria Griffin, which you can see here close to magic, which is her process as a writer and what inspires her. Um, and actually the basics of how she writes, the type of pens she loves to write with um, and how she fills her day, where she's inspired, how she's inspired. It's really interesting. And coming up this week on Friday, we have a Novel Teens podcast with the amazing Louise O'Neill. Um, so please do keep an eye out for that too. We also have lots of learning resources online. For primary school, we have Creative Bursts. Um, so you will also find them on the Molly website. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook um, and find all the information about um, and resources there too. Um, so thank you very much. So we have a few minutes now at the end for a few questions and I'm going to kick over to Laura. Yeah, so we have a few questions here. Uh, the first is, are all writing genres accepted? That is a really easy one. Yes, is the answer. <laughs> so um, it, we had a whole smorgasbord of applications last year. And we had writers who took part in the bursary who considered themselves poets and poets only, um, or other people who decided that they just wanted to write novels. And actually, during the whole process of the week, their idea of writing and the world of writing expanded too. I'd say if you stick to those two nuggets that Amy said, which is truly tell us about you about yourself and put in a piece of fiction that you would really stand over and you are seriously proud of that you feel represents you and your writing style just do that if you follow those two amy tips uh you'll be flying so yes is the answer do we have any other questions Great. thanks jenny thank you we do we have two more 
Um, so the next one is, can the submissions be extracts, i.e. the opening of a story, or does it have to be a full story? Okay, so it can be extracts. Yeah, so that takes a bit of time for you to sit down and go, okay, where's the heart of this story? Where's the meat of this story? What's the best access point? I only have 300 words. It's actually a great exercise, I'm sure Alan would say, and finding out where the heart of your story begins. Um, <laughs> so I would encourage you, yeah, to really, if you have a piece of writing you're really proud of and it's not 300 words, fine tooth comb it and get it down to the 300 words. Alan actually is in a way better position than me and Amy to answer that question. What do you think, Alan and Amy? Um, in my own writing, um, I spend a lot of time at beginnings. So the beginnings of anything I do tends to be in the best nick, you know, if there is a deadline uh, imminent. So that's, that's one tip. If you are working on a longer project, there is every chance that you have uh, paid a little more attention to the opening. So the opening 300 words might, uh, might set up the reader for wanting more and uh, give you a good chance. Um, that's good. One as far thing as the more. heart of a piece of everything. Mm. Sorry, and as far as the heart of a piece of writing goes, I've often been stumped when I ask the question, what, do you, what word do you think that is? So what I often do is I try to find one sentence that sort of encompasses what I feel might be the, might be the heart of the story. So if there's one particular sentence that you feel captures the other piece, maybe the uh, 300 words in and around that particular sentence might, uh, might be a good way in as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Alan. Amy, do you have any tips? Um, I mean, my submission was just the middle of one of my stories. Um, but there was no context for it. It was just the middle of, um, it's actually my story. My mommy lives in a box. You can Google it it's in the Irish Times. But um, I'd say just pick your favourite bit of the story and go with that. That's what I did. <laughs> Love it. Brilliant that advice. You always felt like a standalone piece as well. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And Laura, do we have one more for the merry road? We have six minutes before we're <laughs> finished. So I guess kind of answered uh, the third question in the Q&A was, which was can word count go slightly over 300? Um, but we have two questions from the chat as well. So do you want to maybe take the third one going slightly over 300 and then we can jump on to the two from the chat yeah so because it's a submission form it won't let you go over a certain amount of words it's kind of you'll try and type but it won't let you um so uh, the answer to that is no <laughs> um, it, it, it literally won't let you go over that amount of words um, yes, so you might have to kill some of your darlings amidst uh, the, the previous part to get to your final line, um, which is always a great exercise too. Um, so the, in short, um, you cannot go over 300 words. Thanks, Laura. Perfect. Thank you, Jenny. Um, and then the last question is, can you apply if you went to the single session last year? Oh, yes. Great question. OK, so last year, the standard was so high that we had 15 pe young people that won the place on the week long bursary. But then we had 25 other young people that were perhaps a point or two points away from getting a place in the week long bursary. And we just felt, no, we have to, with our heart and soul, make sure that there's a way that we can encourage these 25 young people to continue their creative practice. So what we did was the wonderful Alan hosted a creative writing day for these talented young writers too. And the answer is this, you cannot apply if like Amy could not. I mean, you could apply Amy, but you wouldn't get a place because you already got a place in a week long bursary. But if you got a place on the day long bursary, yes, you can apply. You can apply um, and hopefully throw your name in the hat um, to be selected 
as one of the attendees for 2021's week-long bursary? So the answer is yes, you can apply if you took part in the day-long creative masterclass with Alan last year. And I would encourage you wholeheartedly to apply. Apply, apply, apply. That would be great. Um, and so that's it, really. Um, hopefully we got thank my thank you to Laura and to Katie, who've been working away on the Q&A um, and on the chat room. Everything that you need to know about the bursary is, uh, is on our website on molly.ie. Um, and you can see it there, Edna O'Brien Bursary. You also can apply online. If there's anything we did not cover tonight, you can also contact learning at molly.ie um, with your question and we will get back to you as soon as possible. So please do uh, get in touch if we haven't covered something that you really have a burning question about. That would be fantastic. Um, and I would also like to thank Simon, our director of Molly, for giving us a fantastic background to the bursary and why it's so important. And it's part of our heart of our program and for young people in Molly. So thank you to Simon. And finally, I would like to thank Alan, our magnificent mentor who steered us last year with such heart, expertise, goodwill <laughs> and a delicacy um, that's needed when you're dealing with 15 personalities of incredibly talented young people and you just want really the best for them and for them to walk away feeling like it's the best experience of their life and Alan played such a huge part in that so thank you and finally to Amy our, our representative young person from last year you are what makes the Edna O'Brien bursary really means something to us the staff and Molly we know that we are facilitating a program that really is transformative um, and we are just so thankful for you applying last year and being part of the inaugural team of 15 young people and we cannot wait I know you're out there teachers youth workers parents young people apply and um, when I was younger I had an uncle who always said something when I was questioning things about would I do this or should I do this and he would say if you're not in you can't win so I'll leave you on that note. Please apply. Many thanks. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, thanks, Emil. I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>